Hi, I'm Greg Kaufman, and this... This! Fix! This is a Switch Bite. Despite the fact that my dog is currently pawing my door, and there's actually pretty poor video quality for this entire video, um, I do hope that I can replicate a pretty uh, good uh, recounting of how I actually went along with this process. Um, Jules, stop it. Jules, get, get up to this. Jules, Jules, Jules. Now that we've dealt with that, I feel like it's my responsibility to use this power that you've given me to get some Mark Rober music stuck in your head. Let's get started. To go about the process of actually building a machine that's capable of printing circuit boards, it's a good idea to understand uh, how circuit boards actually work. While this may seem like a pretty simple concept to understand for some people, it's also just still a very good idea to go over because in reality, it's a pretty simple process. The way I'm gonna go about it in this video is through the pro a process called CNC routing. CNC routing is when you start with a board like this, where you have a very thin layer of copper and a much thicker layer of fiberglass. To actually turn it into a circuit board, all we have to do is we have to use a CNC router to actually drill out areas of copper so that we can create lines or islands of copper with which you can connect other components to. While my explanation of this has probably undoubtedly made it more confusing for anybody watching, it's pretty much just a drill on a 3D printer. That's implication in mind. I know that I need to design a 3D printer um, that is capable of moving on three axes and attach a drill to it and make it controllable. And with those functionalities outlined, we can start with the designing process. To start, we're going to need a few things. Unlike a normal printer, which doesn't actually have much strain on the frame, we're going to need a decently strong frame such that we can support the drill bit as it moves throughout the PCB. By the way, PCB is a word I'll use interchangeably throughout this video. It's just a circuit board. Once we've designed our frame, we need to add on three independently moving axes that will enable the drill bit to move throughout any point on a 3D plane. Like most 3D printers, I'll be using what's called a stepper motor to actually control my axes. Stepper motors are commonly used because they allow for a very simple um, and yet precise movement at a very, very low cost. They get their name from the fact that the motor moves in individual increments, maybe 160 increments per revolution or 160 steps per revolution. After we've implemented our stepper motors, we only need a few other things. First off, a drilling motor to actually drill out the areas of the PCB, a computer to actually control each of these motors. In this case, I'll be using an Arduino, which I bought off of Amazon for $10. For people who haven't used Arduinos in the past, this is an Arduino. Then, I'll need a power supply to convert 120 volts from the wall into the 24 volts I need to supply to all the different components that we'll be using to power this. And then most importantly, zip ties. Next, I made a 3D model in Onshape, which is the CAD software I use, so that I could 3D print all the parts we'll need in addition to the ones that I listed. In CAD, I designed this, which is the overall model I'll use for anything I need to print. Anything in blue and red is something I need to print. Because of the length of the linear rods I'm using, I'll actually have about 275 by 175 by 35 millimeters of build plate space. For people who are nerds like me, the build plate area is just the space in which I'll be able to print stuff. And for my American viewers who are sitting there wondering, what the fuck is a to convert to inches, you simply multiply by the amount of crack used during the creation of imperial units. After this, I 3D print everything I designed out for my Ender 3 3D printers. And because I'm an awesome content creator, I also made a kick-ass time lapse.
have troubleshooting, I managed to get some pretty decent drafts, which I, although not perfect, are pretty good for a first round. I wish I could include everything in one video, it'll still take a decent amount of time for me to learn the software well enough such that I can share better results. I'll be making a follow-up video soon with, hopefully, more detailed circuits and a more in-depth explanation of what's actually going on inside the